Hi, and welcome to Baylor University and the pre-nursing program. We're so thankful to all of our families out there that are taking the time to take a virtual tour of our program and see what it looks like for our future Baylor Bears. My name is Kyle Pyron, and I'm the coordinator of pre-nursing student services for the Louise Harrington School of Nursing. I'm part of the student services team for the School of Nursing, and it's only member that's located exclusively here in Waco. I like to think that this gives me the best of both worlds. And in my role, I try to help make sure that everything pre-nursing runs smoothly. This ranges from meeting with prospective students, to advising current students, to working with those who are looking at changing their major, to planning events, to advising the pre-nursing student organization, and much, much more. So a few of my favorite things. So number one, what do I love most about Baylor? Well, let me start with how I came to Baylor. I came to the university about five and a half years ago after about six and a half years of experience in higher education with another Texas university. I had a lot of green and gold in my family. My dad and my aunt are both Baylor Bears, but when it was my time to choose a college coming out of high school, I did something that I'm sure no one else out there has ever done. I chose to do the exact opposite of what my dad was encouraging me to do. He wanted me to continue the family, family legacy and come to Baylor, and so I decided to choose a state school for my undergraduate education. And don't get me wrong, I, I love my alma mater and the education that I got there. But years later, coming to Baylor as an employee, I can see so many of the things that have drawn generations of bears to Waco. Baylor offers a world-class education. It offers people who are invested in each other's success. And it offers a great city to live and work in. In Texas, we have a saying that you'll hear from those who often move to Texas, and they'll say something along the lines of, I, was, I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here just about as fast as I could. Well, for me, it was something like, I didn't start as a Baylor Bear, but I got here just about as fast as I could. And why did I choose to work with Baylor's nursing program? Well, in addition to my background in higher education, I also have a ministry background, and I've served as a local pastor in my denomination. A lot of the characteristics or motivations that drew me into ministry, I think, are, are a lot of the same motivations that drive many of our nursing students. And so I came into this position from an advising role where I got to work with some of our pre-nursing population. But when the opportunity came along to work exclusively with our nursing students, it was something too good for me to pass up. And my recommendation for a local restaurant or tourist spot, well, I'm all about supporting local businesses. And for restaurant recommendations, I'll give you three. Hands down, my favorite place in Waco is a little place called Alpha Omega. It's this wonderful Mediterranean place on Franklin Avenue that's not too far from campus. And you really can't go wrong with anything that they serve. But my favorite has to be their shrimp euro. And if you're there, don't forget to try one of their amazing desserts. Again, you can't go wrong with anything that they serve. Another one of my favorites is possibly Tom's Burgers. Like their name says, you can expect burgers, you can expect fries, hot dogs, and not a whole lot else, but they do those things so well. Finally, Slow Rise Slice House makes the best pizza. The Texas Gold is an amazing creation of theirs. And hands down, they have some of the best loaded fries I've ever had in my life. Their main establish establishment's a little ways from campus. It's down in Woodway, Texas. But it's so worth the trip. And as an added bonus, they do have an on-campus location over in the Student Union building. So now a little bit about the Louise Harrington School of Nursing. It's important as we dive in this to understand both the mission and the motto of the university because it drives everything that we do at the School of Nursing. So our mission at the Baylor University Louise Harrington School of Nursing is to prepare baccalaureate and graduate level nurses within a Christian community for professional practice, healthcare leadership, and worldwide service. And you can see at the bottom there our motto, learn, lead, and serve. So why should you choose to be a Baylor nurse? Some of the things that our program boasts 
start with a strong foundation in the liberal arts and in your science preparation. So the first two years of the degree, as I'll get into in just a minute, you spend in Waco as a pre-nursing student. And during that time, you're going to be working on all of the background work that's really going to pave the way for when you enter nursing school and all of your professional coursework. And that ranges from things that you might expect, like biologies and chemistries and statistics and psychology and all of those science-related courses that you would think, yeah, a nurse should need to know that. But it's also going to include, include coursework such as English and history and the two religion classes that Baylor requires and all of that liberal arts foundation that we believe really contributes to a well-rounded education it contributes to a global education and it contributes to making you a very well-rounded global contributing member of society. Our program also boasts small clinical sizes so this is one of the things you really want to look for because when we talk about clinicals we're talking about when you're getting real hands-on training but in a setting where you can't screw anything up it's still a learning environment. And so when you're out there learning these things that are going to be put into practice and one day will have real implications on people's lives, you really want to be, make sure that you can get a very uh, personal, hands-on approach. And so the fact that we're able to keep our clinical size small is something that we are proud of because we're able to provide you with that personal, personal experience. We also very much believe in learning and practicing holistic care, meaning not only do we treat the body, but we treat the whole person. Baylor's program also has a 93.8% pass rate on the NCLEX RN licensure exam. Uh, that's from 2018, and that's about two to three points higher than the national average. So that's a very, very strong, strong pass rate on that test that you need to pass to be able to practice as an RN. And finally, upon graduation, approximately 90% of our students have already landed their first job. They're placed in that first job by the time they walk the stage just a couple of weeks after finishing their last class. The School of Nursing boasts numerous research opportunities, both as an undergraduate and as a graduate student. And our students, they work collaboratively with faculty on projects all across the globe. And I'd also add that we do have some of our nursing students who also participate in the honors program. And even though they're only doing two years of their degree in Waco, they're able to continue in the honors program and finish the research necessary for, for the honors designation uh, as they transition in, into Dallas and work with the nursing faculty there. So a little bit about the major. At the, end of the, at the end of your college time, after spending approximately four years in college, you're going to walk away with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, more commonly known as the BSN. Now again, ours, because the main campus of Baylor is in Waco and our nursing school is in Dallas, it is sort of split. So essentially it breaks down that a student would spend their first two years of the degree in Waco as a pre-nursing student. And during that time, they're going to complete 59 hours of prerequisite coursework, which we'll go over in just a minute. Towards the end of that time, uh, as a pre-nursing student, they are going to apply to the Louise Harrington School of Nursing. And upon acceptance, they'll make that transition most commonly at the start of the junior year and spend the last two years or four semesters in Dallas at the School of Nursing. Well, they'll finish the last 65 hours of their degree, which is all nursing coursework. Now, we do have an increasing number of students that come to us with, with a significant amount of dual credit, AP coursework, IB credit, or some other kind of credit that they've earned prior to enrolling their first day in the university. And so for students that do bring in a significant amount of credit, there is a lot of advantage in thinking about accelerating their start to nursing school. Uh, most commonly, we see that be a, a, a one semester acceleration. So they would spend three semesters in Waco as compared to four and then uh, transition to Dallas in January rather than the fall of their uh, of their junior year. They would go January of their sophomore year. Um, the two most obvious benefits to that is uh, it would allow you to graduate in seven semesters instead of eight. So that's one less semester of tuition. And it also means more earning, more earning power. So you're going to be graduating six months earlier. 
that gives you six months extra of salary to earn. And I'd also add that it, if, you, if you stayed on that normal track, it would actually have you graduating in December as opposed to May. And typically that means that there are less graduating students in December and probably less competition for those jobs that are open at the time rather than competing with all of the students all over the country that graduate on a more traditional timeline at the end of May. So this is just a basic outline of what our pre-nursing curriculum, you've heard me toss around some terms like prerequisite coursework and uh, a slide ago I mentioned that students would complete 59 hours of coursework while they were in Waco. Well this just gives you a brief <clears throat> outline of what that curriculum actually looks like. During the time pre-nursing students complete four science courses, they complete a chemistry course, they complete microbiology, and they complete two anatomy and physiology courses. They complete three English courses, uh, two kind of uh, a freshman composition course, uh, an American literature course, and then also an English elective course of their, of their choice, which ends up being another literature course. They also complete a government course. Uh, the title that we have there is PSC 1387. This is a Baylor specific course. Uh, it studies the US Constitution, uh, its interpretation, and then its effects on the American politi political experience. So it is a course that student, most every student will need to take once they are enrolled and that will take it there at Baylor. Part of every degree at Baylor University are the next two courses, Christian Scriptures and Christian Heritage. So students will take those most commonly in their freshman year, although we do have students that will may wait and take them in the sophomore year or possibly in the summer in between. Uh, but those two, those two religion courses are part of every degree that Baylor offers. Uh, Pre-nursing students also need to take one history course. Uh, there's, a, there's a pretty good choice of courses, U.S. history, world history, uh, but, but something along those lines. There's also a nutrition course that's required, a statistics course, two psychology courses, a, a general or an intro to psychology course, and then a development psychology course that covers uh, the lifespan, so from birth all the way until death. There's also a sociology course, an intro to sociology, and then finally, new this upcoming fall, uh, pre previously we have always required that students have had to complete uh, two semesters or six hours of foreign language. Well, beginning this fall, students have that as an option. So that, that same language requirement is there that a student can complete a, the same foreign language through the second semester level. We recommend that Spanish is the language to be taken if a student chooses to do so, but that recommendation is purely about where would a student end up practicing or what language may be the most beneficial to them as they enter, enter their career? And those would either be Spanish or the other option that we accept there, which is ASL or American Sign Language. Now that said, if a student wants to study a different foreign language, be it French or Swahili or Latin or Hebrew or take your pick, any of those languages are accepted, modern or classical languages. However, if a student is not wanting to pursue a language, they do have an option now. And so instead of doing a language, they would be given the option of completing one fine arts course and then one communication and media literacy course, something kind of akin to a speech course. Uh, those courses that are accepted for either one of those are determined by our College of Arts and Sciences and what they have called distribution list, which lists the number of courses that are accepted for fine arts or for communication. Fine arts is going to be more of your uh, theater appreciation, film appreciation, music appreciation, art appreciation, something along those lines, kind of like a history of the fine art. Whereas I was saying communication, it's either going to be like an intro to speech or possibly a mass communication class, but something along those lines. Another part of every student that comes to Baylor, uh, whether it's a freshman or a transfer, in your first semester, you're going to take what we call the New Student Experience course. Nursing has its own New Student Experience course, and that really gives you a lot of advantages. Ours is called Nursing 1101, Introduction to the Art and Science of Nursing. And what NSE courses, New Student Experience courses, are designed to do is they're there to really support your success as an incoming student. So on one hand, they cover all of those traditional transition topics. 
books, whether it's uh, adjusting to college or learning where things are, are located on campus or what are things called on campus or do you have roommate issues or take your pick with any of those things that you might think of that would be tough to learn as a new student on a new location whether you're surrounded by some people that are also there new, but also that a lot that already know where everything is. So they're designed to really cover that and really help speed and ease that transition. And on the other side, it's designed to introduce you to the major. And so aside from the part that talks about academic and personal success at Baylor, we're also going to introduce you to the nursing profession, kind of on a, on a large, large picture, uh, big picture view of it. And during the course of that, that uh, semester, you'll read a book that talks a lot about what do nurses do? What does a typical shift look like for a nurse? You'll get the opportunity to do some high level research into some nursing field that you're interested in. You'll be in the course with only new pre-nursing students, so it gives you a way to connect with other students that share that, that interest. But it will be something that you do take first semester, so fall or spring, whenever you do start at Baylor, every student starts with a new student experience course. A few slides ago, I talked about that pre-nursing students do still have to apply for admission to the Louise Harrington School of Nursing. And so I wanted to briefly kind of give you a high level look at the, the things that are required for admission to the, to the School of Nursing. A large chunk of that is going to be based on your academics. And so at time of application, we're going to be looking at three different GPAs. Uh, we look at what we call a prerequisite GPA. We look at what we call a science GPA, and then finally, an overall Baylor GPA or cumulative Baylor GPA. You may hear me use either term. Um, and, and so what those three are, the prerequisite GPA, when I, a few slides ago, went through the 59 hours of coursework that has to be done, that's your prerequisites. So your GPA and all 59 hours there, that would give you your overall prerequisite GPA. That needs to be at least a 3.0 for admission. One thing to note is that it does include the grades no matter where the course was taken. So what that means is if you are coming to us with dual credit coursework, let's say you've taken a history course uh, at your high school through a, through a local community college and you transfer it in. That grade that you transfer in does impact the prerequisite GPA and same would be true for any other prerequisite course. We also look at what we call a science GPA. And so for nursing, going back to that a couple of slides ago, I mentioned you would take a chemistry course, a microbiology course, and two anatomy and physiology courses. Altogether, that's 16 hours of coursework. So on those 16 hours, we look at what is the GPA there. And that science GPA has to be at least a 2.75. Uh, by time of application to the School of Nursing, you, you do have to have completed at least two of those four. And just like the prerequisite GPA, the grade on those science courses, no matter where the course has been taken, it does factor into the science GPA. So again, if you were lucky enough to be able to take chemistry in high school, that grade would factor in. A lot of times we get the question right here about, well, what about AP coursework? Because chemistry is one of the more, more popular AP exams that we see. AP does give you credit. So you, you would get the credit. You don't need to worry about repeating the course uh, at Baylor for a grade, but it is something to be aware of that AP does only give credit. So if you're using it for a prerequisite or even more importantly for a science course, realize that it's only coming in as credit, meaning that if we would normally calculate a science GPA of 16 hours, if you use AP coursework for chemistry, now that science GPA is going to be calculated off 12 hours. And it's not a bad thing, but it is something to be aware of because now each remaining grade is worth a third of your total GPA, whereas with, with a grade in chemistry, it would have been worth a, a fourth of the grade. And then the final GPA is your overall or your cumulative Baylor GPA. This is the only one where transfer work does not impact. Cumulative Baylor, it is just going to be coursework that you have completed at Baylor University. And it needs to be at least a 2.5 overall. We also require a nursing school admission test. Uh, the Louise Harrington School of Nursing uses the HESI A2. And we require that students take the, the English composite and the math section. And you need to have a score of 80 or better on both sections. 
And at application deadline, you must have already completed at least 44, and that should say 59, that didn't get updated, but it's 44 of 59 prerequisite hours. Uh, and so what that means is if the deadline, if you're applying for fall semester, the deadline is traditionally January 15th. By January 15th, you would have already had to complete 44 hours. You could still be enrolled in the last 15 in that final semester, but you would have had to have that number already done for us to go ahead and look at you as a fully qualified student. So living on campus, pre-nursing students are not required to live in any specific residence hall. Uh, we encourage our students to find the housing option that, that best fits your community need. For some of you, that will mean choosing one of the ones that we have where we do have a significant pre-nursing population. For others, it won't be. And, and so that's just for me to tell you, do whatever's best for you. There really is not a wrong answer here. Um, there's something to be said about rooming with students that are in your same major. And there's a lot to be said for rooming with somebody that may be a completely opposite of opposite interest than you, studying something completely different from you. But our students live in a variety of housing across Baylor. It could be first year communities, it could be a living learning center, it could be one of the residential colleges. Now I want to talk specifically about the two where we do have a significant number of our pre-nursing population. Uh, the first being Teal Residential College. And if you look at the bottom of that slide, it does give you the website that would take you right to, to Teal's uh, homepage. And, and so you can learn a little bit more information about it there. Um, what I want to highlight is that Teal is home to engineering majors computer science majors, and our pre-nursing students. And we have a typical community there of somewhere between 50 and 60 students. Um, and one of the great things there is that it, 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 it's a very tight-knit community. There's a, there's a great sense of bond among the students that live there. There's a faculty and residence. There's a lot of community programming. It really is a great community to live in, if, if that sounds interesting to you. One thing to note, though, is as one of our residential colleges, it does require a two-year commitment living on campus. Now, for pre-nursing, that works out great because you're most likely will be here for two years. It saves you from having to move out, find an apartment, live in an apartment for one year before you move out of that and then move on to Dallas. But uh, it's just one of the options that we have. Another one is Earl Hall. And within Earl Hall, it's the Science and Health Living and Learning Center. Um, and it really uh, it houses a lot of pre-health students, but of course, as a health-related field, pre-nursing students are, are welcome to live in Earl. We have a smaller community there, somewhere around 20 students. Uh, and then, uh, just like on the previous slide with Teal, Earl's uh, website is at the bottom of this slide. So if you're interested in learning some more about Earl, just please visit that website as well. Now, pre-nursing students are eligible to join any student organization for which they might be eligible, but some of the ones that we have that are specifically related to our nursing majors, uh, while students are in Waco and are pre-nursing students, they're eligible to join the Future Baylor Nurses Association. That's the student organization that I'm faculty advisor for, and I'll talk a little bit more about them in just a second. Uh, if students make that transition to Dallas and into the nursing major, they're, they're eligible to join the Baylor Student Nurses Association. There's also the Nurses Christian Fellowship and Sigma Theta Tau. So the Future Baylor Nurses Association, what it does is it gives pre-nursing students an opportunity to serve and build community with one another and to learn more about the nursing profession. It gives them an opportunity to meet and dialogue with speakers within the nursing profession. Uh, to give you an example of that, this past fall we planned what we call uh, the Advanced Practice Nursing Panel. And it allows us an opportunity to bring some of our faculty from Dallas down that, that do also work in advanced practice, uh, perhaps as a nurse practitioner or something of the like. And they spend an evening with our pre-nursing population and, and actually with, our, with uh, the greater pre-health community uh, explaining what they do and the education that went into uh, getting where they are now and what their jobs look like day to day and answering any questions that students might have, kind of opening up a few more doors that students might think about beyond their BSN. Uh, and then FBNA also works at, at planning and, and executing events and service opportunities such as the Stepping Out Day of Service, 
They participate in the homecoming parade. They have monthly social events. They have done a food drive for local communities. Uh, but it's just a really great way to connect with other like-minded pre-nursing students if that's something that you're interested in. Very briefly, just a little bit about the Dallas campus. Um, it boasts two buildings that are uniquely designed to serve our nursing majors. We have our SIM Center, and then we have the academic building that was opened in fall of 2018. So up until fall of 2018, what is now the SIM Center was home to the entire Louise Harrington School of Nursing. And we're blessed to now have this great addition, the academic building, where you'll spend a lot of your learning time. Uh, the chapel is there, an auditorium, all of the student services office. You'll spend a lot of your time studying and learning there. And then, of course, doing your simulations in the Sim Center. And so a little bit about the Sim Center. What its purpose is, is, is assisting in the preparation of a safe and effective professional nurse. So what that means is it's going to make sure that by going through these simulations, by going through these lab exercises, so to speak, that you possess the necessary skills and the judgment that you're able to then go out into the real world and provide quality patient-centered care. And it does it all through engaging in simulation-based learning activities. One of the questions that comes up, and, uh, comes up quite a bit is, uh, as a pre-nursing student, how do I participate in missions? How do I participate in study abroad? Well, missions, our nursing community has a very active participation in missions. Uh, they go to India, to Africa, to Peru. They go to McAllen, Texas, uh, which is right on the Mexico border. And then they participate in missions throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. Uh, study abroad, there's actually two different ways I'd like to talk about study abroad. Nursing does have specific study abroad trips, and they go to Hong Kong, they go to Zambia and Africa, uh, and then they also go to Great Britain. So if you're interested in going on a nursing-specific study abroad trip, you'd want to do one of those, most likely once you've transitioned junior year or senior year up to the Dallas campus. Now, we also have students that may want to do uh, maybe go to a location that, that's not where one of our, our nursing specific programs meets. And so I want you to know that it is very possible to do study abroad on the pre-nursing side as well. I have students that will do maybe one of three things. Some will save some of their prerequisite coursework and they'll be able to identify a study abroad program that offers those prerequisite courses and then be able to go and take that take those courses either in a summer program or perhaps even as a semester long program and so it's it's something that it is very possible to do it's very good to think about that early on. It's very good to talk with me and the study abroad office very early on, uh, just to start thinking about that, making those appropriate plans, and then making sure you have that coursework that would fit into there. But then I also have students that, um, oh, several slides ago, I talked about the accelerated start, and they'll be able to finish all of their prerequisites in three semesters but maybe instead of starting Dallas a semester early, they realize they have an opportunity to take this one semester and go abroad. And at that point, they finished all of their prerequisite coursework, so it doesn't really matter what program they go to. They'll choose something based on interest and based on location, and they'll be able to go study abroad for the semester, maybe taking coursework, uh, for example, maybe taking some business coursework, which could still be applicable to a, a nursing profession, but whether or not it is, it's something that you would have interest in and someplace that you want to study, and it would open up another, another avenue for you to spend a semester abroad. As I wrap up here, just a few hints um, while you're still in high school, things that you could do to be prepared. Uh, first would be just to take any kind of chemistry or biology coursework that's available in high school, whether that's a, a regular high school class, a pre-AP, AP, dual credit, whatever. Any background that you can bring in chemistry and biology is going to be beneficial to you in your college work. Uh, second would be if they're available in your high school, take those anatomy and physiology courses. 
again, whether it's dual credit or for college credit or if it's just a regular high school class, preparation is awesome. Um, third thing would be you want to try to get as much real world experience as you can. So take any opportunities you can to shadow a nurse at your local hospital or, or your favorite doctor's office or whatever kind of uh, inroads you have or access you have. Talk to those in the profession. All of it can do, it can do two things. It'll help you identify that you really truly are in the right major. And then it will also help you um, with connections later on as you make that next step in your career. And closely tied to that, when you're able, if you're able to volunteer at a local hospital or doctor's office or, or any kind of setting there, that is just, again, valuable real-world experience that can do nothing but help you in this career. Normally, I would open this up for questions. Since we're doing this virtually, I'm going to leave this here on this slide just because it gives you my contact information. Currently, uh, the pre-nursing office itself is closed, which is why you're, you're sitting in my little virtual home office with me right now. But my email there, kyle underscore pyron at baylor.edu, is one of the absolute best ways to get in touch with me. I am more than happy to answer any questions I can help with. I will be more than happy to set up any kind of video call if I can help you or your family make any decisions during this time. I want you to know that I so appreciate the time you've spent in listening to me talk about pre-nursing. I hope to see you soon. I hope that you stay happy, that you stay healthy. God bless.